Angela Levin, who joins me now. Angela, very good evening to you. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I can't be that. It was sensational. Well, that's very I kind loved of you. <laughs> yes. But, but, was it, but was it fair? Well, I think it is fair because they um, do exactly what they like without considering anybody else, pushing through any sort of good manners and uh, what they have actually gained as a royal. It's just all about them. And I think if you do that, then you must expect some sort of response. Let's just take to unpick this bit by bit. So on the on the phone calls, as I say, if she can persuade somebody that she knows to to give up a private number for a Republican senator or two, so she can she can cold call them, and it's unpaid lobbying. There's no there's no graft involved here. This is just a a, a cause. This instance, it was paid uh, paternity leave, a cause close to her heart. There's there's nothing wrong in that. Well, I'm not sure about that, actually. I think there's a certain thing called good manners. And if you are a member of the royal family, she's no longer a working member. But as you said, you know, she uses her title all the time, endlessly, never without a title, on books, before she speaks, talking to children, any age, it's her title. So in that way, you should actually behave properly. The, the right way of doing it is to get your... Uh, secretary to ring their secretary and then you arrange to meet. Um, the fact that she, you couldn't know her identity before you answered the phone was, I think, part of the whole ploy. What, what was she hiding? Um, she knew that they would answer because they would imagine that it would be somebody senior who wanted to talk to them. So it's sort of trapping everybody, isn't it? The whole focus is making other, you know, getting one over somebody else. Um, whether it's the Queen or, or or anybody or somebody making coffee. You know, it's always you've got to win. I, I think she's remarkable at one way that she's so ruthless that she can drive through anything, seems to have no conscience ex except making up things that might have happened to her but haven't. Um, and, and that's how they go about things. And I, I think a lot of people I speak to are not actually necessarily interested in the monarchy, but feel that it's sort of dirty tricks one after the other. And just sort of anthropologically, it's just fascinating to see how far they'll go, Angela. I mean, I mentioned the letter. I wish we had the foresight to, 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 to be able to show people it. But take it from me, uh, and you've seen it too, I'm sure, uh, A4, but it's, it's yay big at the top. Uh, the, the office of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. As I say, you, you, could, you could probably see it from wherever Jeff Bezos was in low Earth orbit. It's that big. But it's, it's not just the sort of tasteless gaucheness of the thing. It's what's then in it, the content, uh, the substance yes. of the thing. And, and actually, it's a little bit economical with the actuality. I'm not going to use the L word because you never know. She's, she's fairly litigious. But uh, this whole, whole sort of narrative about how she was a poor girl from the wrong side of the tracks, it's garbage. Well, this is nonsense. We see three types of Meghan in that letter, which is quite interesting. We see the get up and go Meghan, very good. We see, which calls herself the mum. She does it sort of apologetically. She's not a politician. She's not grand. She's not this. She's not that. She's talking to them as a mum. So she's even using her children to get what she wants, actually. I mean, it annoyed me. She then says that she had a almost a poverty-stricken childhood because the best they could do for a meal was a, a $5 salad. But if you look at her TIG, which was her website that she stopped um, writing in just before she got engaged to Harry, but of course nowadays you can always get back and look at it, it's full of her going, say, went to the most fantastic restaurant, you know, it costs $57 to have a steak and so on. So she's even sort of lies against herself. Um, her father at the time apparently uh, won a huge amount of money. I think it's $275,000 in the lottery. And he spent a lot of it on her. So she didn't have anything to, anything she wanted, she had. She went to a school that cost, you know, $28,000 for her to go to. So that was nonsense. And then at the end of the letter, which is what made me, my, my stomach turn. She then becomes a sort of little mummy and she says, you know, from me and also Archie, Lily 
and Harry. Now, you don't put Archie and Lily in something that you're writing about, a serious thing about giving families money to look after their family and not necessarily have to go to work when the child is very young. It's not business-like, is it? It's also using them to promote herself, which is not right. And then she puts Harry at the end of it, as if he's the last person who's important. It's not Harry and Meghan and and our children. It's, you know, Archie, Lily. But she did say Lily, not Lilla, but she didn't use what she actually is calling Lily um, that upset everybody, including the Queen, and, and used a sort of nickname that was really reserved for the late Duke of Edinburgh to call his loved wife. You know, it was a sort of intimate thing. My view on that, actually, if I may say so, was that she's so angry with the Queen, who wouldn't let her make money out of being royal, that at some point she will set up a Lilibet Foundation. She's a feminist, so she's got Archie with a foundation. She's going to have Lilibet with a foundation. And they will go to do lots of commercial purchases, and the Queen will be involved in that because of her name. And I think that's a... I might be completely wrong. I hope I am. But I think it's a pretty nasty thing to do. Angela, do you know why? I mentioned COP at the end there. Do you know why they were... It's probably a very simple answer, why they weren't at COP. I ask because it just feels like it's a a custom-built occasion for them swanning in, uh, issuing assorted vacuities about the environment and how they're going to do wonders for the planet, etc., etc. Why why aren't they there? Well, I I can't help you on that one, I'm afraid. Um, I don't know whether they weren't there because they didn't know about it, whether they didn't want to go and be in in competition with Prince Charles and... William and Catherine, you know, they wouldn't have been in the same level. So I don't think Meghan wants to do that. She wants to be number one, which is absolutely her priority. Um, or whether the royal family tried to to block them. I don't think they would have done that because it would have seeped out and we'd all know that and think how awful but um, or how terrific, depending on which side you're on. But uh, I, I don't know why they weren't there. Perhaps they weren't doing enough. Perhaps all the jetting around didn't work for them, although it did for a lot of other people. 